Thanks for watching this new video. In this video, I will show you how to integrate Shape Device ID Plus with APM and an API server to store the device ID. So to make it simple, I will not re-explain what is Device ID Plus from Shape. Arnulfo, my colleague, did it very well in a YouTube video. You can find the link here and as well in the description. So watch the Arnulfo video to know what is Device ID, how it works, okay? The goal in this video is to show you how you can integrate APM with Device ID and an external API server in order to store the Device ID values, okay? So first of all, let's start quickly on device ID. So device ID is a way to fingerprint the device, okay? And my, my, my goal is just to reduce friction when the, the device ID match uh, the device ID in the API server. So the first time I will connect to my resource, I will have a login, password, and an MFA. And the second time, if my device ID is exactly the same and match, I will just have the username and the password. This is the goal of this demonstration. So to use device ID, connect to cloud services, add an application, Arnulfo present this very well and explain the concept. Select the snippet, copy your snippet. It's a, it's a JavaScript snippet. So you copy it, you inject this snippet into the login page. Watch the Arnulfo video explain exactly where to edit the, in the customization option the logon page to inject this JavaScript, okay? So now let me show you my, my workflow. So this is a logon page where the JavaScript, JavaScript is injected, okay? Customization, advanced customization option, inject the snippet in the, in the source code. Secondly, I read the device ID value, if it exists, okay? So on my GitHub, you can find the link in the description. I explain and I show you the, the I rule to use, okay? The I rule read the device ID values and, and set the values in an APM variable, session variable. So far, so good. Then I check, and this is the goal of this video, I make a call to my API server. To do so, in this per request policy, I use the HTTP connector. The HTTP connector uh, send a REST call, it's, an HT, it's a REST client like Postman. It send a REST call to my API server with an identifier, the username, set on the login page, and just ask, do you know this username? If yes, let's go to the next step here. Okay, you know this username, so can you check if the device ID you have in your database is the same I reserve from the user? So in this box, I just check if the device ID collected by the I rule is the one provided by the API server. Okay, and then if it, if it match, then no MFA. If it does not match, it's a new device ID, perhaps it's a new browser, or perhaps the, the user did some changes on his laptop and now the device ID is different, the fingerprint is different, so I will present the MFA challenge. And I will, if the challenge pass, I can trust this user, I can trust the device, and I write the new device ID. If it is a brand new user, first time connecting to the platform, I don't have the username in the API server, I go to directly to the MFA challenge, okay? So login, password, MFA challenge, then I write a new entry for this username with this device ID. So behind the scene, uh, behind the scene for the different calls, I use the HTTP connector. So HTTP connector is here, and as you can see, I have several calls, okay? The first one is, do you know this user? So just one call to my API server, okay? I use loopback for information for this API server. And can you check if the username exists? Okay, if I have a 200, okay, it exists. If I have a 404, it does not exist. I just check the response code. And to check the response code, it's a branch rule, 200, okay. Okay, so far so good. The next call is post. Okay, it's a brand new user. I don't know this guy, okay? So I am on this branch at this moment. 
okay, and I and I pass the challenge. So create this new entry, username and device ID collected by the I/O. So here I I do a post to this entry point API entry point with the username uh, for the username uh, values and device ID is an array and the two device IDs because we collect two device IDs for information. Uh, then the the last one is in case I, I need to update okay a device ID. So here I just want to overwrite the existing device ID because the user has a new device ID because he either he cleared the cache or something happened on the laptop, but it still trusts because he passed the MFA. So I just search for the username and I just overwrite the device ID values. That's it. So let's make a try, okay, just to understand how it works. So first of all, this is Postman just to call, okay, to request my API server. As you can see, I make a call to the device IDs. There is nothing. So brand new installation, brand new, brand new solution. So now let's use Chrome. Chrome in, in a normal way, okay, not incognito, normal way. I connect to my to my resource, and of course, the big IP present the logon page. I enter my, my username, so Matt, the password, I love mama. And at this moment, the the API code is, is, is sent to the API server. Say, do you know Matt? No, I don't know Matt. Okay, so the branch for new user, new entry. MFA challenge. I pass the MFA. MFA could be a push, OTP, could be whatever you want. It could be a, it could be a certificate, okay, as well. I pass the MFA, and at this moment, I have access to my backend application. So far, so good. But at the same time, now I should see my device IDs. Okay, so you can see a new entry mat with a two device ID. So if I just get back to my VP, what happened here? Logon page, JavaScript injected, device ID calculated. Collecting the, the two device IDs, checking if Matt exists. Matt does not exist. Okay, challenge. I pass a challenge. I send post call to the API server. Please write down at now Matt and the two device ID collected here. This is what happened. Okay, Matt and my two device ID. Awesome. So now let's, let's connect again. Okay, so I close the browser. I reopen Chrome and I do exactly the same. Okay, so I connect to my to my application, have a login page. So I, I use exactly the same username, I love Mama. And at this moment, the JavaScript executed uh, the calcul of the device ID and I should have exactly the same, okay, because it's the same browser, same laptop. And now, I bypass the MFA. Okay, so now I went to this path. Okay, and okay, no challenge. Okay, so now let's go, let's launch another browser. Let's use another browser that will calculate a different device ID because the device ID is based on the device, of course, the laptop, but as well on the browser because the JavaScript is executed in, in a browser. So in a different browser, I will have a different result, a different device ID. So I use Edge and execute exactly the same workflow with the same user, okay? So let's say with Matt, I love Mama. As the, the user uh, exists, but it's a different device ID presented by the browser, okay? So I have to pass the MFA and then I have access to my application. If I check on Postman now, this was the previous device IDs from Chrome, from Edge. It's a different one, okay? So from, from the big IP, now this was the workflow. Logon page, collect device ID, new device ID. Username exists, yes, it's still Matt, but the device ID check failed, okay? It didn't match. So I had the challenge and I write down the new device IDs. And these are the new device IDs. So now if I if I try to to if I if I close my edge and I again, open up my edge again and I go to the to the application, I will not be challenged. Okay? Because now the API server has the two device IDs. 
That's it, okay? This is the device ID plus integration with APM. If you want to learn more on device ID, of course, you can find a lot of information on Shape website, F5 Shape, or with Arnulfo videos, it explains a lot of things. Thanks for watching.